Jack, the Appia, the Appia investment in the new Brazil project has brought a lot of debate online at Investor Intel. What are your thoughts about this deal? I think it's a, a beautifully intelligent vertical integration by Appia. Appia is the most interesting project in, Can in Canadian wares today because it may well be the premier deposit of neodymium rich monazite in, in, in North America. And if, if that pans out, adding to it the heavy wares that would be contained in the ionic clays in Brazil it is just perfect. All right. So let's ask, let me ask you another question I saw online this week is what are the benefits of being an ionic clay? The benefits of ionic clays are that they are very low in radiation, uh, very little thorium, no uranium. And they tend to be enriched in the heavy, the higher atomic numbered rare earths like dysprosium and terbium, which are the key materials for magnets. We talk about neodymium all of the time, but in fact, without dysprosium and terbium, the, the only thing you can do with, with rare earth permanent magnets is put your shopping list on the refrigerator door or use it as a, a jewelry clasp. So, Additional commentary with regards to the Appia acquisition was that maybe they're trying to draw our attention away from Alsa's Lake. Is that true? No, no, no. The, the acquisition in Brazil is, is a natural uh, addition to the Alsa's Lake uh, discovery, which we're hoping is going to be a proven deposit very shortly. And that th nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, um, they're synergistic. The one uh, enhances the value of the other both in both directions. So you're going to be the kickoff speaker. You're going to actually introduce Constantine Karanopoulos from Neo Performance Materials at the Critical Minerals Institute Summer Summit on June 14th. Yes. Can you tell us, give us a little glimpse into what your number one issue is that you're going to be talking about? My, my number one issue is can... North American industry becomes self-sufficient in critical minerals. And this is yet to be determined, but it is the most important uh, this discussion in the critical mineral space, believe me. Um, I, I'm gonna give my opinion on that date and uh, we're, we hope we're gonna have other opinions and we're gonna have a lively debate on whether or not North America can in fact become self-sufficient not reliant on, on other countries for our, the critical minerals for our manufacturing base. Okay, so in addition, of course, to the shortage of critical minerals, that's why they're called critical minerals. Can right. you tell us uh, whether or not you're going to get involved as well in another heated debate that I'm hearing a lot of reoccurring themes about, which is the critical shortage of professional and qualified professionals? Actually, that that is probably more of a problem for for us in in not only North America but also in Europe uh, than even the supply of critical minerals. I, in fact, the most critical shortage in the Western world is experienced, competent mining engineers who are also chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, but. We produce hardly any mining engineers in, in, in the Western world, while China's are churning them out on an assembly line. And uh, this is going to come back and bite us in the you-know-what. Uh, it, maybe it already has, but uh, you, you've hit on, on a very key uh, issue, uh, Tracy. This is the problem of our time because you can't create new mining engineers just by snapping your fingers or allocating money. That doesn't work. It takes time and we better find the uh, skills. We need the people to teach these people. We have them now, but they're getting older by the day, believe me.
So on that note, the Critical Minerals Institute will be hosting a debate on that particular topic at the end of April. For more information, go to criticalmineralsinstitute.com. And Jack, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you.